OK, uh, let's look at how we'd solve this inequality. Uh, the first thing we notice is it's got an x squared in it, which makes it a quadratic inequality. That means um, I'm not going to be able to get all the way just using pure algebra. I am going to have to use a graph. First rule of quadratic inequalities, OK? Um, so the first thing I'm going to think about is uh, what shape the graph of this is going to be. And it's a quadratic, and it's got just one x squared, so it's going to be a u-shaped graph. OK, so when I come to draw it, um, I'm going to have a lovely U-shape. And it's going to cross the x-axis twice, and I'm interested in those points, those critical points. So I'm going to calculate the critical points, and they're going to be when this graph of this y crosses the x-axis. In other words, when this y is going to equal naught, like this. OK, so I've gone from a quadratic inequality to, just for now, I'm just solving a quadratic equation. Uh, and this one factorises quite nicely, I think. Let's do our grid. And if I uh, experiment, I find that this arrangement works. So here's the factorisation. And while I'm finding the critical points, I want this to equal 0. So we set up our possibilities. So each bracket could equal 0. And that leads to the solutions. Uh, 3 and minus 1. So I'm ready to use my graph. This was just finding out where the graph crosses the x-axis. I know it's got plus 1x squared, so it's going to be a nice smiley graph. Here's the x-axis. I don't need a y-axis. OK, and these values are going to be minus 1 and 3. And now I decide um, where I'm going to be. I want to be less than 0. So on the x-axis, y equals 0. Above the axis, y is greater than 0, and below it, y is less than 0. So we always put those three things um, next to our graph. And I want to be less than 0. So I look at my picture and I think, OK, if I want to be in this region, y is less than 0. Here's the bit of the graph that I want. OK, I don't want to actually equal 0, so I'm going to put empty circles here and here. OK, so the x's I want, so that was looking vertically, deciding um, when the graph, then when y is less than naught. But I now want the x's that that works for. So the bit of the x-axis I want is, again, this bit in between. Now, um, sometimes we'll want the top edgy bits of the graph, and then there'll be two ranges. Here I've just got one single range, so I'm going to write this all in one go. I really want to say that my x is between these values of minus 1 and 3. So I put x between the minus 1 and the 3. And then I've just got to arrange my inequality signs correctly. Well, x has got to be small compared with 3, because there's 3 and I need to be that side of it. So x is less than 3. x has got to be greater than minus 1. But I've written the minus 1 before the x. So instead of saying x is greater than 1, I'm going to say minus 1 is less than x. And a tip is that these inequality signs always point the same way. We've got the smallest number here, the largest number here, x in the middle, and these are always less than signs. Or if these were filled in circles, if I was allowed to be at the edges, these would be less than or equal to signs. OK, so this is my answer. And that's what happens when we want the middle section of the graph, and it's just one range. OK, uh, the other situation uh, where we want the edge bits of the graph, OK, the answer looks slightly different. So I'll do another video showing you how that one pans out.